Okay, so this ride day isn't really a ride day because I forgot to bring my helmet camera. Um, I was in a rush leaving in the morning and uh, and uh, I was meeting to meet my guide and and, uh, and uh, yeah, so the, the, I, I like when I go to different places, uh, sometimes I like to hire a guide and Te Oti Wakan um, was one of those places I wanted to learn a little bit about so I met a guide there and uh, show me around then we went for lunch somewhere afterwards and it was pretty fantastic um, I actually got there really early in the morning um, because I wanted to get there at sunrise and as you can see all these hot air balloons and they were magnificent colors but all the different hot air balloons flying over above it um, uh, but unfortunately the weather wasn't too great there's a panoramic shot and how I do the panoramas is I use in Google Photos, I just take one photo, then one next to it, then one next to it, one next to it, and then Google Photos stitches them all together quite amazingly. Um, and you get that panoramic. So if you've got your camera and you've got a, um, you, you, all your photos go up, all automatically upload to Google Photos, which I suggest you do um, from, from your camera, um, then you'll get, you know, the, if you do them correctly, just keep, keep the phone steady, one photo, two photo, three photos, even four, and you can get some really wide panoramas. But um, the, the place has like a lot of history and they worship the sun god. The moon god seemed to be a, a more important one by the structure, the structures and how it was centered. Um, and there was obviously a little uh, place there for the sacrifice of the, you know, the virgins, I imagine, or something like that. <laughs> they usually do that. They worshiped a, like quite a few different gods. Um, which is not not uncommon, um, you know, because basically they didn't understand. And they see so we're moving, looking up onto the moon temple there. Um, but this this structure was over about 30 kilometres. There was like you know some some estimates as low as 130,000 people lived here, and um, and up to maybe 300,000 people, uh, 250, 300,000 people living uh, living in this region. Uh, and this was the main area. And you can see even through the structures, you can see where all the people put the walkways through for the general population to get through to the main areas. Um, it's just quite a really impressive structure. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't really kind to me that day, this day, but I learned a hell of a lot and um, it's, uh, it's quite incredible. Uh, unfortunately, development around the area is probably gonna stop it from really, from them finding everything they need to find and a lot of development uh, there is people's jobs and that. So when they do find stuff that's outside this main area, um, a lot of the times they don't report it uh, because they know it will stop production of uh, the development. So it's pretty sad uh, considering what it could be. I mean, it's already quite amazing and it's it's very steep to climb up to the top. There's a, it doesn't look so bad here, but when you get to the main temples, it's a very, very steep climb. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was fantastic. It just ruined a little bit by the weather. Uh, you know, the sun was over the other side, so I didn't get any sunshine on the actual, um, on the balloons, which would have been nice because they were really colorful and quite spectacular. Um, but you'll see there's even paintings. Um, it's looking onto the moon temple from the sun temple. Um, there's even um, yeah, quite a lot of uh, artwork and paintings throughout the place and a lot of indigenous animals that were painted um, and they were sort of worshipped as well or, or uh, in some capacities um, but it's a, it's a very impressive site and it's pretty huge. Um, I don't know how popular it is, they have a, 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 a light festival at night sometimes and apparently that's pretty cool but also apparently it's uh, not as popular as they thought it might be and um, Apparently it's sort of causing some damage to some of the structures, uh, which is pretty sad. But um, I, uh, I got there like first light, so basically I left when it was dark in the morning and got there at first light. And, um, there was just no one there, there's one of the paintings you can see on the, on the wall. The red, red was used a lot because obviously they sort of uh, learned how to use that colour. Um, um, uh, and and that, uh, that sort of clay, uh, uh, clay paint that they that they used. Um, yeah, so you can see the, where the where everyone could walk in. There's another panoramic. Um, so there, there's quite a few of those structures dotted around the temples, um, 
how people could access it and um, and and where they where they would uh, where they would all come in and stand and watch whatever was was going on. I'd love to know all the stuff that you can see there. That's the, like there's a at the bottom of the Moon Temple. There's a um, a structure there that like a like a. Um, it's like a very big panorama, uh, but a structure there for like a, a stage type thing. So I imagine they had some sort of events there, whether they were sacrifices or they were um, they were entertainment. I'm not not sure. It seems that it was a pretty benign community as far as it wasn't really a um, from the structures. It, it wasn't really because there's no military structures around there. So it looked like they lived in peace for quite some time. And it took, I think they started at about 150 AD, they started the construction of it. And there was, it's well documented throughout Mesopotamia. Um, there's some scientists there. Um, and, uh, and it finished, I think, around 250 AD, uh, the, the total structure had been completed. So it's, I mean, it's a massively impressive, that's the entrance as well. So it looked like it was fairly well controlled as far as how people came in and out of it. Uh, out of the structure, um, but it's, a, it's if you go to Mexico City, it's only about 40, 50 kilometres north of Mexico City, so it's a nice little ride, and it's, I mean, you could spend a lot of time there, because there's a lot of places to visit, it's over a, quite a large area, um, and uh, unlike some of the other structures that I've been to, which were built around mountains, this seemed to be um, something that was built uh, and there was a lot of people living there and their, their security was pretty sound because there's no, as I said before, there's no military structures around that, uh, around the temple. Or well, they could, they haven't found any. So maybe they might have been spread out on a, over a wider distance. Uh, but yeah, there was no one there when I got there. There were some scientists, some archaeologists and, and some people working in different areas so getting preparing for work. But, uh, there was, I think I was the only tourist there at that stage. As I was leaving, there was a few more. You can see how the water was uh, up, pumped through there when it obviously did rain. But um, it was a really good morning. And then afterwards, I went for lunch and uh, with the, my guide, and it's a really cool guy. Uh, Stuff and it was really cool. So, questions or comments below?